poll selections can be performed for it if you're working off of like a 2D drawing, if you're importing like a DXF, DWG file, or if you have some sketches that you're working with, it's just 2D. There's no solid surface model, uh, you know, provided to you by your customer or if you designed it just as a 2D, you can take advantage of those 2D geometries in your whole uh, selection techniques. So uh, there's two types of whole machining operations. One is the cycle types, which could be like drill, tap, bore, reverse bore, and then we have whole pocketing and whole profiling as the whole milling operation types. So first we'll be focusing on the whole selection and then we'll take a look at the different uh, parameters like the cycle parameters and the milling parameters in here. Now, uh, what I have here is a, uh, you know, uh, 2D drawing here. It was just, uh, you know, either drawn in Visual CAD or imported into Visual CAD. And uh, one of the ways that we can go about selecting these holes uh, for machining is uh, under hole machining operations, if you select drill, you have different ways you can select uh, holes. Um, you can do select drill points or circles. So you can actually just pick even a point as the location of your drill, or it could be even used as the location for where you want to do a pocket, hole pocket, or a hole profile. So we'll look at select drill points and circles. Uh, you can interactively select these points by just picking them on your graphic screen, or you can drag a window to select all of them, or you could even use the uh, uh, you know, tools, the selection tools that are available to you in the CAD section where you have modeling aid and you can say select points, it'll automatically pick all the points that are visible in the current layer or in the drawing. So if you have multiple layers, it'll pick all points uh, from all of the layers that are visible to you. So once you make the selection, right click and you can see that the three points that you selected are automatically added to the list. And the next step is you make a selection for the tool, you specify your cutting parameters and generate the tool path for it. Now, one of the other ways for selecting holes is by selecting arcs or circles. So in this particular example, we have a number of holes and circles of different sizes in here. So I could go into hole machining and select drill and I would like to select circles of a certain size. I'm gonna use select drill points and circles and I'll just drag a window to select all of these geometries in here. And I can apply a range filter. I can select use diameter range filter and I can specify the minimum diameter and a maximum diameter. So in this particular example, I'm gonna pick a maximum diameter to be one of these smaller holes. Now once I pick a maximum diameter, you see that once I select an arc or a circle, it automatically establishes the maximum diameter, so it determines what the diameter is, and it drops the other holes that were selected, so the filter automatically uh, you know, limits the hole sizes in here. So once you made the selections for the hole size, you could go into your tool tab to make a selection of the tool. So I have an entire library of tool listed, so I'm gonna pick a three quarter inch drill, uh, set the feeds and speeds, establish clearance, cutting parameters, the depth of the hole, and then generate. So now the tool path has been generated for the holes of three quarter inch diameter. Now one of the things I would like to point out here is uh, you can see that the holes are drilled in a random order. And we will talk about how we can go ahead and uh, you know, sort them so it'll minimize the number of transfers and make it much more efficient. And then we will do that when we cover the whole cycle parameters. So we looked at how we can select points for hole machining. We looked at how we can select arcs and circles. So in this particular example, we only have circles. So you can select circles and you can apply uh, diameter filters to select circles of a certain size. Now I'm gonna repeat the same operation again. I'll do a copy paste. You can do control C, control V, or you can do right click copy and right click paste to make a copy of it. I'm gonna edit this operation again remove my selections, go to select drill points and circles, drag a window to select them all again. And now for the diameter filter, I'm gonna set a minimum diameter to be the size of this particular hole. So you'll notice that now only the larger holes are selected in here. And then I can specify a tool that's appropriate for it. Now there isn't a inch and a half drill, so I'm gonna pick the largest drill size that's available in here, generate a tool path for it. And then I can go ahead and 
uh, you know, use a whole pocket or a whole profile operation to basically, uh, you know, mill it to the size of the exact size of the hole. So if you do not have a tool that matches the diameter of the hole, you can actually use a whole pocket or a hole profiling, and this can be found under two axis machining methods. And we'll cover that during the later part of the webinar, the different types of milling, uh, hole milling methods as well. So in this example, we looked at how we can select points, select arcs and circles. This is one of the options for hole selection. Now the next example I'm gonna go over is how we can select uh, face edges, flat areas, when you're working with solid surface geometries in here. Now for this, I will switch over to an example in RhinoCam and we'll cover that. Now the workflow remains the same whether you're running RhinoCam, Visual CAD Cam or Visual Cam for SolidWorks. Now the example I have here is a solid model and you can see there are different hole types in here. You have through holes, you have counter bores in here, so there's different types of holes and uh, there aren't any curves or sketch geometries on the model. Now you can extract those curves or sketches from the model using the curve extraction tools available in the CAD system. Uh, if it's visual CAD CAM, you can use flat area regions to extract them. In RhinoCAM, you can use uh, what's called duplicate face border that's available under curve from objects, uh, duplicate face border. You can use these tools in here to extract the curves from the model using duplicate face border. Now, the alternative way is you don't have to extract those curves or edges from the model. You can directly select face edges or surface edges from the 3D model. So I'm gonna go into hole machining and I'll pick drilling. And now I can select drill points and circles again. And I can pick the face edges from the model. I can just go pick the surface edges. I can either pick an arc or I can pick the entire face edge, which is split up into two arcs in here. So I can select these two, and then right click to accept my selections. You can see the six face edges have been selected. And as you highlight them in the selected holes feature list, the corresponding face edges are highlighted on the model as you see it. In the next step, you make a selection for the tool. I'll pick a quarter inch uh, drill bit in here. Set feet and speeds clearance. And we can also pick the depth off of a 3D model as well. And then generate, create your tool path. So we've selected face edges in here as machining regions. Now we can also select face edges from partial holes. I've just made a copy of the same operation. I'm gonna edit, select remove all, click on select drill points and circles, and I can select these partial arcs. Right click, generate. So you could select face edges, you could select points, and you could select arcs or circles, which could be 2D geometries. Now the next selection technique we'll cover here is using flat area selection filters. So as we go into hole machining and drilling, the second choice here is select holes on a flat area. So select holes on a flat area will prompt you to select a flat area. So basically you wanna pick a planar face. You could be working with a solid surface or a mesh geometry. So the flat area selections work with solid surfaces and mesh geometry. So when you select a pick a flat face and then right click on it, it automatically identifies all of the holes on the flat area that you picked. And you can apply a diameter filter in here and you can specify to ignore holes that are larger than a certain size, like a half an inch in diameter. You can specify a filter in here and it'll exclude holes that are larger than half an inch or whatever size that you put in. In this case, we probably have holes that are you know, larger than you know, 0.4 inches are excluded. You pick your tool and then generate, create your tool pad. Now the face edge selection 
that we talked about just a moment ago will only work with solid and surface geometries. The face edge selection will not work on mesh geometries. So for mesh geometries, you'd either have to use flat area regions, holes on flat area, or you'd have to create curves from the uh, you know mesh geometry and pick those as select drill points and circles. So the face edge selection works with solids and surface geometries only. Now we looked at the flat area selections. Now there's one other way how we can select flat areas is by the use of uh, predefined regions. Now the predefined regions would have to be first created before they can be selected. So as you can see here, the predefined region list currently is empty because we have not created any predefined regions. So to create predefined regions, we will have to go into the machining objects browser. So if your machining objects browser is not visible, you can toggle it by selecting tools, machining objects. And then you would wanna go over to the regions tab, which is right next to the tools tab on the machining objects browser. And you can use what is called select flat areas that's one of the ways to create predefined regions using select flat areas and I can pick a face and then right click will create regions around each hole and each of the regions have been separated out so as you select the region set you will see there's regions created for each hole you can also apply filters for the flat area regions so to identify the type of regions you want to extract. So in this example, I only chose to extract holes, uh, just arcs and circles from the model. So I chose not to extract the outermost region. So I had the ignore outermost region selected. So this is one of the ways how you can create predefined region. You can also create predefined region using surface edges. So I can use select surface edge areas and I can pick these edges in here and create a predefined region. So we have predefined region created using surface edges. We could create predefined region using curves as well as flat area regions. Now, once we have these predefined regions created in here, you can go into your machining operation and click on select predefined. And you'll now notice that the two predefined region sets are displayed. And if I would like to drill all of the holes, let's say I would like to do a pre-drill operation for all the holes, I can just highlight the region set and it'll automatically select all of the regions that are in the region set to the selected hole features. You then specify your tool, specify a cut depth in here, and then generate, create your tool pad. So we talked about drill point circles using points, circles, face edges, flat areas, and predefined regions. The next thing I'm gonna cover is how we can use features from model to program whole features. And I'll take an example for that here. Now here I have a solid geometry, and under the features tab, we have automatic feature detection, so when you run an automatic feature detection, different feature types are identified from the model. So in, in this webinar, we'll be focusing on whole features. So you will see that there's three different types of whole features that have been identified. And as you hover and select one of the features, it gives you information about the depth and the min and the max diameter for each of the features that were identified. So if you're working with solid surface geometries and you have prismatic parts, you could take advantage of feature detection. And once you have these features detected, you can automatically do what is called feature machining. So in this particular step, it automatically selects those features and creates the machining operations. And you can edit the operation to pick a tool that's most appropriate in here and you'll also notice that the tools are automatically filtered out based on the diameter of the feature, the whole feature that you selected. So in this case, we have a 3 8 inch hole. So I can go ahead and select a 3 8 inch drill and generate the tool path for it. 
Likewise, I can do the same thing for the two and a quarter inch. Pick a larger tool in here and then generate a toolpath for it. So just to summarize what we covered so far is the different selection techniques using points, arcs, circles, using face edges, flat areas from solid surface mesh geometries, predefined regions from solid surface mesh geometries, and predefined regions can be created using curves, face edges, as well as flat areas.